Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today I had planned to address Ryzen 7 memory scaling performance, but for now that's been put on the back burner, though testing is almost complete and the results are very interesting. So yesterday morning when I got out of bed there were several dozen comments, emails and Twitter messages from you guys asking me to test Ryzen using an AMD GPU, or perhaps even two. With so much demand for these tests, I decided to do them. The fastest single GPU on hand from AMD right now is the Fury X, and since that delivers similar performance to the GeForce GTX 1070, I decided to compare them using the Ryzen 7 1800X. It seemed that DirectX 12 games were in demand, and oddly, at the top of everyone's wish list was Rise of the Tomb Raider. I say oddly because this is a game I consider quite poor for measuring system performance in particular CPU performance. In fact, there was a good reason why it wasn't included in my 16 game Ryzen performance video a few weeks ago. The request was that I also test a single level of the game called Geothermal Valley, so I have. I actually didn't really have many requests to test other DirectX 12 games, which seems a bit strange. Testing one level of one game seems kind of limited and definitely not the Harbour Unboxed approach. So in an effort to cover my bases, I also threw in Hitman, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Ashes of the Singularity Escalation, Tom Clancy's The Division, and some alternative testing with Battlefield 1 and Far Cry Primal. Now don't expect to see too much or any Intel CPU testing here really, I wanted to focus on Ryzen and how it works with the Fury X and GTX 1070. I didn't want to risk turning this into another AMD vs Intel clash, though I can add those results a bit later if need be. At this point, pretty much every day next week is booked out already. The channel has gotten a bit crazy lately and it's demanding a huge amount of my time for multiple projects. Anyway, with the limited time I have available right now, this is what I've been able to put together for you guys. Before we jump to the results, please note that both the Ryzen 7 1800X and Core i7 7700K processors were locked at 4GHz with any kind of power saving or turbo boost type features disabled. So basically the Ryzen 7 CPU was overclocked and the 7700K was underclocked, though please note I only compare the Intel CPU's performance in Battlefield 1 and a single Rise of the Tomb Raider test. Both CPUs were running with DDR4-29. 33 memory. Okay, so starting with Hitman, things are very much like what you would expect to see. Nvidia recently improved their DirectX 12 performance in this title, and as you can see, the GTX 1070 was 7% faster than the Fury X when comparing the average frame rate. Similar margins are also seen when testing with the DX11 API, so nothing unusual here. The division was tested using the ultra quality settings, which mostly loads up the GPU to be honest. That said, we are testing at 1080p. The Fury X does enjoy strong performance gains when using the DirectX 12 API, though that's not surprising. That said, the GTX 1070 was also faster using DirectX 12, though the gains weren't as substantial. Again, nothing looks out of the ordinary here. I have tested Deus Ex Mankind Divided using both the canned benchmark, as well as in-game performance using Presentmon. Here we can see the canned benchmark results, and it's interesting to see that the Fury X takes quite the pounding on the minimum frame rate. That said, once again, the GTX 1070 is slightly faster using DirectX 12 when compared to DirectX 11. Still, the margins are much the same between the Fury X and GTX 1070 using either API. Moving to in-game testing, towards the start of the first level, we find a far less demanding situation. The Fury X isn't plagued by those low minimums now. That said, the GTX 1070 is still the superior performer, even when using DirectX 12. Again, the margins are much the same, at least when looking at the averages. A game I've been keen to test with and show off Ryzen's newfound form is Ashes of the Singularity Escalation. That testing is still to come and you will likely see it in my Ryzen 5 coverage. What you'll see here is the Fury X getting completely annihilated when using DirectX 11. Moving to DirectX 12, the Fury X performs much better, though it is once again the GTX 1070 that is able to extract the most out of the Ryzen 7 1800X processor. Okay, now for the Rise of the Tomb Raider testing, which you guys have all been requesting. First, we'll look at the results from the CAN benchmark, focusing on the Geothermal Valley section of that benchmark. Running DirectX 11, the GTX 1070 was 29% faster than the Fury X. Keep in mind this is an NVIDIA sponsored title. That said though, AMD has made great strides here, at least with the RX 480 from what I've seen from previous tests. Anyway, moving to DirectX 12, we now see the GTX 1070 is 23% faster, so the margin was reduced somewhat. That said, once again, the GTX 1070 is getting the most out of the 1800X. 
Initially I tested the start of the geothermal valley level, but found the frame rates were quite high, quite a bit higher than those from the built-in benchmark. The shocking part here being that the GTX 1070 was now 41% faster than the Fury X when using DirectX 11, though it was only 27% faster for the DirectX 12 test. Right, so this test takes place right after the first cutscene, and runs for 60 seconds. It is considerably more demanding than both the previously seen tests. The margin between the GTX 1070 and Fury X has been reduced, though the GeForce GPU was still 26% faster using DirectX 11 and 21% using DirectX 12. So we aren't even seeing the Fury X match the GTX 1070 in these titles using an overclocked Ryzen 7 processor. Before we move on to look at the gameplay footage compared side by side, here is a quick look at how the 7700K and 1800X compare in the same section of the Geothermal Valley level. Using a single GPU, the margins look much the same using either the AMD or Nvidia hardware, so there isn't much more to say here really. Let's move on. Now to support the testing done so far, here is the GeForce GTX 1070 and Radeon R9 Fury X running side by side in the very pass we just looked at the results for. Please note the DirectX 12 API is being used. There are some interesting things to note here other than the fact that the GTX 1070 is consistently ahead in terms of frame rate performance. You will notice that the CPU usage is considerably higher when using the GTX 1070, though that makes sense given it is delivering stronger frame rates. As for the GPU utilization, please note that the first percentage figure on the GTX 1070 side is showing power. I should have unticked this feature in RevaTuner to avoid confusion. Anyway, be aware that's what you're seeing here. After the temperature, we have the actual GPU utilization figure. You will notice that for the most part, the Fury X is pegged around 100%, while the GTX 1070 often dips down into the 80s. In fact, it rarely hits 100% in this pass, so with a higher clocked CPU, there is a good chance you will see more performance. For those of you interested, here is the same pass using the DirectX 11 API. Again, CPU usage in general is high when using the GTX 1070, though at times the Fury X does creep ahead. It's certainly closer than what it was when using DirectX 12. That said, even with DirectX 11, we still see fairly even loading across all eight cores. You also notice that the threads aren't as heavily utilized, the threads being even numbers and the cores odd. GPU utilization jumps all over the place using DirectX 11, and it's rare that we see the GTX 1070 exceeding 90%. Before wrapping up the testing, I have just a few extra things I would like to show. So there have been some very interesting reports that the Radeon RX 480 Crossfire graphics cards deliver exceptional performance on the Ryzen 7 platform and allow it to push past what the GeForce graphics cards are capable of. Seems far-fetched based on what we have just seen, but is it true? Well, unfortunately, I don't have two RX 480s right now. I did a few days ago, but I sent one of them off to Thermaltake with the Ryzen 7 giveaway PC that you guys will be able to check out next week, and of course, one of you will be able to win. What I do have laying around is this old relic, the Jackhammer of Graphics Cards, AMD's Epic Radeon R9 295X2. Essentially what we have here is a pair of 290X GPUs teamed up on a single PCB, so in terms of performance this should be similar to the RX 480 Duo. Since a pair of 290X GPUs should be faster than the GTX 970, I swapped that out for the Titan XP. Let's go see what we found. Now you would expect the Titan XP to be faster than the R9 295X2 for the simple fact that it is in over 90% of the games out there, particularly when testing at 1080p. However, here it's not. In fact, it's a good bit slower, at least when using DirectX 12. The 295X2 is at times up to 27% faster and it's allowing the Ryzen 7 1800X to hit frame rates previously thought impossible given the Titan XP's performance. Although CPU utilization is often higher when using the Titan XP, what you will notice is that something is stopping the Nvidia GPU from hitting full stride on the Ryzen platform. While the dual GPU 295X2 does a great job of keeping all 5,632 stream processors occupied, the same can't be said for the Titan XP and its 3,584 CUDA cores. The Titan XP utilization is shockingly low, rarely does it reach 70%. In fact, for the most part, utilization can be seen hovering around 55 to 60%. So I imagine we could boost the Titan XP frame rate by 30 to 40%, taking that into account, and that would place it consistently ahead of the R9 295X2. So there certainly looks to be some kind of bug here. You might be thinking the Titan XP will be faster using DirectX 11. Well no, in this title that's not the case. In the GTX 1070 and Fury X comparison we saw that when using DirectX 11 frame rates dropped for both GPUs. 
That said, Crossfire support appears to be almost broken using DirectX 11, and as a result, the R9 295X2 is all over the place. It was basically a stuttery mess. We know that the Titan XP isn't performing anywhere near its full potential on the Ryzen 7 platform, and I'm not going to speculate as to why this is, it just seems to be some kind of bug. For now though, let's compare it side by side with the GTX 1070, a GPU it should be at least 40% faster than at 1080p. Instead, what we see here is that at times, performance is exactly the same. In fact, at the most, the Titan XP only manages to pull ahead by 12%. I also thought it might be a good idea to check out some DirectX 11 titles. One title that has shown really poor performance on Ryzen CPUs is Far Cry Primal. Here we see that when using the GTX 1070 and Fury X on both the 1800X and 7700K CPUs, both of which are clocked at the same 4GHz frequency, we see that even with the Fury X, the 1800X still falls behind the 7700K by a slim margin. What we are seeing here is a GPU bottleneck, so what happens if you emulate Titan XP light performance by lowering the quality settings and resolution? Does this see the Fury X pull ahead on the Ryzen platform? Here we see that no, that isn't the case. The 1800X imposes a CPU bottleneck at around 120 FPS, which as we have said in the past is still very acceptable, but not a true reflection of Ryzen's true gaming performance either. The 7700K on the other hand, clocked at just 4GHz, pushes well ahead with both the GTX 1070 and Fury X. Having seen how the Titan XP and R9 295X2 compared in Rise of the Tomb Raider, I was very intrigued and wanted to test some more games, or more DirectX 12 games. I was pressed for time though, so that'll probably have to be a follow-up video at this point. The biggest issue I had when trying to conduct that testing was the lack of crossfire support in those games. Uh, for example, Deus Ex Mankind Divided wouldn't work at all in either DirectX 11 or DirectX 12, and by wouldn't work I mean it was a stuttery mess, so that was disappointing. For me, Rise of the Tomb Raider looks to be an outlier, or at least that level of the game. I actually don't have any other results to go on for this title right now as I never used it for CPU benchmarking and I certainly didn't include it in any of my original Ryzen testing. The game is well known for its poor optimization, which is a shame given how amazing it looks. I'll admit the R9 295X2 results are very interesting, but I don't think this one game tested using one level is enough to say that NVIDIA GPUs are handicapping Ryzen. I'm pretty sure that isn't the case. What I wanted to test was a game that I knew was well optimized for both NVIDIA and AMD hardware and didn't suffer from poor optimization. For me, that title was Battlefield 1, at least when using the DirectX 11 API. Even at 1080p, the Titan XP was often pushed to around 90% utilization using the 7700K, and here we see it delivering very impressive frame rates on both the 1800X and 7700K. Meanwhile, the 295X2 utilization was all over the place. It's safe to say Crossfire isn't working correctly here either. I have read mixed reports online surrounding Battlefield 1's Crossfire support. Most seem to be seeing the same kind of performance issues that I am. I almost never play around with Crossfire or SLI as I think both technologies leave a lot to be desired and you guys should definitely avoid them unless you have money to burn. So I can confirm there is some funny business going on with the NVIDIA based GPUs in Rise of the Tomb Raider, at least on the level tested, when using the Ryzen platform. I will be asking NVIDIA if they are aware of this issue and if a fix is in the works. Okay, so a couple of things I would like to just make note of. All the game performance figures that I have gathered using Ryzen 7 today were done using the most up-to-date BIOS revision, DDR4 2933 memory, and a fully up-to-date version of the Windows 10 operating system. All this sees performance go unchanged in all the gaming titles I originally tested in my day one Ryzen review. So there hasn't been a magical Windows 10 update quietly pushed out that improves Ryzen 7 performance. I've heard this so many times over and over again so I thought I might as well address it. Likewise, I did test Windows 7 performance a little while ago and found it to be a bust as well. Still, I don't know why people need to keep making up stories or carry on about Ryzen 7 gaming performance at all. Performance is excellent, particularly given this is a brand new architecture with no history. Already we are seeing games such as Ashes of the Singularity Escalation and Dota 2 updated to better take advantage of Ryzen, and the performance gains are exceptional. So people really need to chill out and enjoy the fact that we now have some real competition on our hands. As for my Ryzen 5 testing, I won't be including Rise of the Tomb Raider or Far Cry Primal. Instead, I will be picking up Ashes of the Singularity Escalation. Finally, once AMD has a GTX 1080 Ti Challenger, then we can do some serious AMD versus Intel CPU testing. We can probably also do some exciting AMD versus NVIDIA GPU testing as well. 
That's all for this one, guys. I know it's a bit of a quick and dirty benchmark video, and I did just slap this together over the weekend in just under 30 hours, so forgive me for not going into the usual depth. If I didn't get this video out today, it might have been a week or two before I'd have a chance to look at it again. So I hope this satisfies those of you who have been asking me to check out AMD versus NVIDIA GPU performance on the Ryzen platform. I'm your host, Steve. Catch you again soon.